Welcome to today's presentation and tutorial of NoFi. What is NoFi? NoFi is a tape cassette loop station. You have um, a mixer with two stereo inputs or mono inputs and five tape recorders on cassette. Um, I know that there are many, many tape simulations out there and some of them are incredible and I really love them. But uh, NoFi stands out for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, NoFi can be used as a typical digital looper. You may want to um, map your foot switch controller MIDI to the record and play buttons of the tapes and work exactly like with a looper, only that the sound will be uh, the sound of uh, tapes, uh, cassette. And secondly, I um, have made uh, the sound of the cassette really faithful to um, original vintage cassette tape loops. It sounds very lo-fi, so do not expect to use this if you want hi-fi sound. This is a little standalone uh, lo-fi recorder for those people interested in using uh, hardware instruments or VST instruments and uh, to record the loop on tape or use their own loop in tape. And um, the, the way that the tape works uh, needs a little bit of explanation because it's not... Um, typical way of uh, tape simulation. So when we have a, a tape recorder, a cassette tape recorder, we have two entities. The first one is the tape and the second one is the record player, the tape player. Now for this reason we have two sections here, recording settings and playback settings. These are settings that we set before recording uh, our loop or importing our loop. Uh, these settings are um, the type of the cassette. We have ferric and chrome and ferrochrome tapes with their own noise signature and equalization. And then we have here a parameter for the age of the tape. When the tape is old, uh, we have irregular amplitude in the signal, so uh, a vintage cassette sounds uh, with, with this uh, irregular uh, amplitude um, values, and uh, as you will see, it helps a lot to, for the simulation. Then we have the noise. The noise can't be zero, because of course we are simulating tape, it doesn't make sense to have zero noise. And uh, the noise depends by, the kind of noise depends by the type of the cassette. And then the tape saturation. We can go, uh, we can record and saturate the tape up to the distortion. So these four parameters must be set before importing or recording sound. Now about importing, uh, we see here some uh, buttons the bottom. Uh, the load and import buttons are similar but not identical. When you want to import a fresh loop, uh, let's say you have some loops on your computer that you want to use with uh, NoFi, you will use the import button. And <coughs> the load button, as you will see later, is to reload tapes that you already exported. This is why um, when we import a loop, we play back the loop and we will stamp on it all these parameters, the type of the cassette, the age, the noise and saturation. This is why uh, it's different from many tape simulations because uh, let's say if you slow down a tape, uh, you, you can't just mix up uh, some noise, you can just add noise, because if you slow down a tape, it also the noise will slow down, and also the irregular amplitude 
of the uh, given by the age of the tape will have some effect will slow down and also the saturation will change and also the type of a cassette the equalization of the cassette will react accordingly to a change in the speed of the tape this is why we need to separate tape from the recorder so the first thing we want to do is to import a tape so when you open um, no file you have this mixer interface first thing you want to do is to set your audio settings here you have your input device and your output device and the IO mappings which means that for the channel 1, 2, 3 and 4 you may want to map your input according to your audio interface so you don't need to route the sound uh, from external software and uh, I suggest a low vector size and signal vector size if you are uh, using live sound uh, in, into the software. However, uh, the I.O. vector size can create glitches if it's too low. And this pretty much depends by your CPU and your computer. So you need to uh, make some tests before starting recording. Now let's say we want to import a loop. As you can see, we have here the inputs and then the tapes. And this uh, red buttons are the tapes and the relative channel. So we push the volume up and then we select the bus. These are the output buses uh, for the channels. And basically you can send uh, the audio to uh, the tapes, T-I-T-B, T-C, T-D, T-E, R, the five tapes, or CR, which is the control room. This is true also for the AUX returns. Uh, we have a, a reverb and a delay, which we can use uh, with our mixer. Now that we set our volume up, we can import a file. When we import a file, we will listen to the file being recorded to the tape, being stamped to the tape. Remember, with these settings, so you may want to do a couple of tests before uh, recording. And, um, and uh, well, let's do it. So import, pad. So this is our original pad. This is already a noisy pad, but uh, we, we will give it a real tape filling. And uh, let's play it back now. And it will go in loop, of course. Now it sounds much more lo-fi. And uh, of course the type of the cassette and all these parameters change a lot. The things, for example, if you choose Chrome and we uh, push the, the age and saturation, for example, and noise, things will change. Again, we are listening to the uh, non-process sound. play it back. Now it really sounds like a tape cassette loop. Now about the playback settings. Um, we have the speed of the tape of course and then these four parameters. These four parameters are basically error we introduce um, in the uh, tape layer. The azimuth is the um, um, is the setting of the heads. It's a, it's, it's basically we disalign, we uh, um, change the alignment of the tape and what happened is that we have a phase uh, cancellation, phase difference between the two channels. This happens when the, the, the heads are not properly aligned. Again, we will not make a beautiful sound, we will make a lo-fi sound. The catch is a probability setting, so it will it could be not immediate to uh, to listen, but it's a probability that the capstan, which is uh, basically the little rubber 
uh, motor that uh, push the tape inside the tape player uh, can catch for a little moment the tape and that result in a momentary change of pitch let's put a high value so yeah here we go of course it's random there it is this especially happens with tape loops because uh, you're not using the reels as a matter of fact you use what you see here are not exactly the reels the reel uh, only one is turning because this is the motor but we don't have reels we have an imaginary tape loop inside here so the wow is uh, on a regular speed of the motor and that results in a slow pitch change this great and eerie and uncanny effect on on the play it will go slightly out of tune there we go add some catch and a little bit of azimuth And then the last one is the flutter. The flutter is similar to the wow, but it's much faster. Again, it's a periodic uh, change of the speed. And uh, it results in this wonderful lo-fi effect. Of course, you can uh, do... Um, um, if you want to have more quality, you set this settings to lower values, also this one. And this one, uh, let's import back again this. Again, this is the normal sample without any effect. Uh, we have a little bit more quality in the sound. Uh, the ferrochrome has quite a balanced uh, relationship between low frequencies and high frequencies. Um, the flutter, wow, catch, azimuth, and speed. See, this is what I meant when the when we stamped the, the the qualities of the tape onto the the file when you, we slow it down we slow down everything and this is pretty much what happens with real tapes and um, these parameters are now written in the memory uh, stamped on on the buffer of the file while well, instead these parameters are only playback settings. So if now I export my sound, uh, I will export a tape with these playing with these recording settings, but the playback settings are, well, will be not stored because of course these are parameters that are relative to the tape player, not to the tape. But of course, you may you will want to export your tapes for later loading back when you do a new session and you want your uh, old work uh, back again in your loopers. Um, of course, the playback settings will be recorded when you bounce like four tapes on tape E, for example. So I would press these and send all the t tapes, all the four tapes to tape E, and then of course, all the playback settings, plus the recording settings of each tape, will uh, eventually end in, in, in the file of the tape E. So keep in mind this. And, uh, okay, now we have a first loop. 
I'll, I'll route back again all the loopers to control room. Let's say I like this. I want another tape, another loop. So tape B. Okay, uh, let's import, let's say, well, the settings, noise and age and flutter. Well, the recording settings, let's say I'm fine with those and uh, import. Again, you're hearing no effects. We're just hearing the playback and the tape is recording this sound. Here we have it. And now when we play back, we have the uh, chosen recording setting plus the playback settings on and the tape will loop. Of course, we don't have any synchronization, but uh, if you want to synchronize the play buttons of every player, it's very easy because you can key map with your keyboard or MIDI map with your MIDI controller, the uh, play buttons and recorder buttons. So uh, if you if you want all, all of them to play at the same moment, you just map the button play to the same uh, key on your keyboard or uh, MIDI controller. Now we have two loops. Um, fine. We need to create a, forward, a third loop. You take a, a tape number C, tape C, and this time I want to record uh, a guitar. So I have here my input channel. I plugged in in my audio interface my guitar, and uh, what I have here is the possibility of loading a plugin, uh, VST or audio unit. In Macintosh computer, I suggest to load audio units. So I uh, have here my uh, fantastic Archetype Corey, Corey Wong Guitar um, Simulator and uh, now uh, if I route it to Control Room I have my guitar here and of course I need to uh, by default the VST plugin is in bypass so I press on now my plugin is working fine so I want this uh, to be recorded on tape C we go to tape C we mm, turn up the volume we open tape C I can close this one okay let's start playing these guys and now we record something on tape C with a guitar. Okay. Uh, now on every tape, of course, I can choose uh, the length of the loop. So I can do this and select only this part. Um, I can equalize a little bit this one um, okay let's say I'm fine with this now it's a good idea to trim the loop so now it's the tape is trimmed to the uh, length of my selection and let's see how it fits in my mix of course, it's not synchronous, but I don't care in this moment.
Uh, okay. Uh, now, let's put the tape A, B, C. Okay. Now I want uh, also uh, to record some Solina strings. And another thing you can do is to use one of the input channel for a VST or audio unit uh, virtual instrument. So first and foremost, uh, before turning on NoFi, you connect your MIDI keyboards. In this case, I use my Moog grandmother. And then I open uh, a plugin. Again, remember that on Macintosh, I suggest you to use audio units. And uh, so here I have my Arturia Solina strings, which really fit this uh, lo-fi sound. And I turn up the volume, just root to control room to here. And it's not working, of course, because it's in bypass. Okay. Now, I route this uh, channel to tape D, and we turn up tape D. Here it is. Let's choose a different equalization. I like it aged and noise and a little bit saturated. Uh, I want it very lo-fi. So let's play back everything. Okay, so let's try to record the Selena. Again, I can trim my sound, see in my loop. And I can play back. Oh, of course, now I can use also the effects I have. I have a reverb and I delay. They're very handy and quite uh, simple but effective. On auxiliary two, you have the reverb and the one you have the delay. So let's put a little bit of sausages over it. Okay, let's say now that 
I want to record uh, tape A, B, C, D on tape E and bounce everything to a single tape. What I will do is to uh, tape this, um, to take this uh, tape recorder and set the age, noise, and saturation, saturation at minimum um, because we already have um, quite a lot of lo fi on these four tapes. And um, so, first thing I want to do is to route every tape to tape E. Tape E is now maximum volume and routed to CR. I want also to record the uh, reverb and delay, so I route reverb and delay to tape E. So everything will output from this channel. I take down the volume here and let me just choose tape one. Okay, this is okay. And let's press record and start one by one the loopers. Let's say I'm fine with this recording. I let the reverb and delay to fall off. And then and then let's press stop press stop. And here is my recording. Now I stop all the players here. And what we have here is my final recording. Yes. We have a little bit of silence at the beginning, but that's what we did. Uh, it's not important to have uh, any of these controls as playback settings, because now we will export this. And as I say, the playback settings are not exported with the tape. You just export the sound with the recording settings that you now have. And here I have my master tape, very lo-fi. Sounds really like a tape cassette. 
I just want to remember you that this is not a tape simulation of those kinds, tape simulation that simulate 24 tracks recorded or a uh, quarter of inch or inch tape, which are high quality tapes. We are talking about cassettes, players, and uh, tape loops, and possibly vintage cassettes, so they sound really, really <laughs> dusty and lo-fi. This, this is what it's all about. This is about lo-fi music. Okay, let's say I'm happy with this. I just can press export, master, and it will export a AF or wave audio file 24-bit on my desktop. And, uh, oh, I forgot this. Uh, you need to trim your file when you, when you want to export it, because otherwise you will export one hour of sound, because the tapes are one hour uh, long. Uh, so before exporting uh, those tapes, you need to trim. This is because the audio buffer dedicated for each tape is one hour you can record up to one hour of sound for each tape and then when you have a loop or your final master you want to trim it like this and then export uh, and this way you will export just the length of this tape in this case is 173 seconds long and this is true for all your tapes uh, for example, I want to export also this one. I trim it and then I export it like tape A and so forth for every tape. Uh, the presets will write the positions of every control, but not the VST instruments you loaded and, of course, not the content of the tape. It's just the controls of these machines. Um, so in order to have your session back, you will write a preset and then you will export all the tapes and next time you open the software, you read the preset and use the button load this time to load a tape in, uh, in your tape player. So load is used only when you, when you load a sound you previously exported from the tape player. So it has already all the recording settings uh, stamped on the tape. I think that this is it. Uh, it. I illustrated pretty much everything about the software. As you can see, it's very simple. It's just a mixer with five tape loopers. But uh, the funny thing is that, first off, you don't need any other software. You just uh, can plug this in uh, turn this on, plug your instruments in, and start recording in no time with the feel and the sound of old tapes, uh, loops, old tape cassette that we love. The sound is very faithful. Uh, of course, uh, I based my simulation on my tape players, which are not universal. Every tape player, has, especially nowadays, uh, sounds differently. But... Um, with equalization and the use of these parameters, you can obtain pretty much any kind of flavor of tape loops. Uh, and uh, I hope that you like the software and you will find it uh, today on my website, georgiosancristoforo.net. And um, the, for now, we have only the Macintosh version available. The Windows version will be available in December. We are working on that. Uh, the price is 19.50 euros, so 19.50. It's a very low price, like a pizza. And uh, have fun with it, and see you next time.